Okay, welcome to the third review of the evening. Uh, up this time is a strategy, I guess, game called Neighbors Back from Hell. Um, so, Neighbors from Hell uh, 1 and 2 are early 2000s video games. I, I've heard the name before, but I gotta admit, I don't really know what is this, because, well... If you can see the spelling, the art style, the a lot of things about this, these are games that originated for Euro from Europe. Um, and indeed, the blurb here says um, these are HD remasterings of the beloved childhood gems, Neighbors from Hell One and Two. I'm presuming that they are childhood gems for like kids of France and Britain and what have you. I mean. I'm not even sure if they came out over here um, back in the day. I think they did. Like, uh, I mean, if they did, they probably didn't sure. do, do any business. Uh, point is, this is very much a, a European uh, thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's also another, um, maybe the most inexplicable THQ Nordic remaster we've reviewed this year. Like, um... Now, while the, the, while the name on, of the publisher is Handy Games, once again, Handy Games is a division of THQ Nordic. Um, they who love the 8chan. No, I'm never forgetting that. No, not letting that, that go. Um, but anyway, we got the Nintendo Switch version of this. So over to the Galax for the body of the review. Uh, so, yeah, I did not have as much time to play this as I had hoped because I had budgeted in some time for tomorrow when we were supposed to be reviewing this. Uh, but, yeah, this is, I mean, strategy is a little bit overdoing it. Um, basically, you are a normal guy named Woody, and your next-door neighbors, the Rottweilers, are odious, obnoxious people. Uh, so you decide to uh, hire a video camera crew to videotape you getting back at them, I guess. Um, so the first tutorial, like, basically what you do is you go into the house, uh, Mr. Rottweiler and or, I think, later Mrs. Rottweiler. Again, this is this was originally two separate games, Neighbors from Hell and Neighbors from Hell 2. In this game, it's presented as Season 1 and Season 2. Uh, you have to unlock or have to beat, I think, most of the first six, if not all of them, before you can unlock the second six. Uh, the second ones, I think, go into more areas of the house and have more complicated puzzles, but they, they're all basically the same thing, is you sneaking around the house as they repeat their monotonous task, which is, I think, usually two things, maybe three sometimes. Although, you can alter their uh, behavior by, like, if you... Uh, sneak a laxative in the guy's drink then he will uh, start adding running to the bathroom to his routine um, but yeah you basically you pull things out of the cabinet or the medicine drawer or the fridge and use those on other objects to uh, basically mess around with them and uh, get the neighbor angry. Uh, and if you get caught, you will get beaten up and ejected. And uh, you do have three lives, which I don't know if was the case in the original. And I read something in one another review that the scoring here is, like, the neighbor has an anger meter that goes up when you do a prank uh, or when, when a prank goes off. Um, and like if you get enough of them in a short enough time which is usually like two uh the neighbor will like have a conniption and hurt their back or something um in the original version you had to do that to gain to do the best score on each thing but in this version you just have to complete all of the possible pranks i think like your score will still be higher if you make them have a conniption but uh, it's not required. Um, but yeah, the gameplay is pretty simple. Uh, a lot of the pranks will be the same thing appearing in multiple levels. So 
also like one of the pranks is to get an a uh, rotten egg out of their out of the uh, refrigerator and uh, blow it up in the microwave. Uh, that's been in that's indefinitely in the first two levels, and I think it's probably in some of the later ones too. Uh, each stage has more pranks to do. Oh, you don't actually have to complete all of them to clear the level. Uh, there's a finish flag, but uh, to get the uh, gold statue thingy that marks 100% completion, you do have to do all of the possible pranks. Uh, I don't think it's possible to miss out on the ability to do a thing um, because their routine is uh, very, very fixed. So even when you, like, prank them uh, with laxative and then there's another prank you can do in the bathroom to uh, elaborate on that, that they have to go to the bathroom, to do, they'll still keep drinking the thing with laxative and go down. So um, at least that's what I found. Um, the art style is nice. It's It's kind of... Uh, British claymation style, not quite Wallace and Gromit, but around there. Uh, this particular style of game doesn't really particularly grab me, but that might be because we don't have obnoxious neighbors. If we did, I imagine this would be a bit more cathartic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Um... I wasn't actually playing with the music because I was doing something else while I was playing or listening to something else. I was planning on checking that tomorrow, so I can't really comment on that. Uh, it took me a while to realize that there are some pranks that don't require using an object on a thing. Uh, it just requires you to walk up to the thing and do a thing, notably uh, tying up the TV's antennas in a knot. Uh, just requires you. It doesn't require, like, a pair of pliers or something. Uh, anything else? Uh, do you guys have any questions? Not especially. Me neither. I think I'm good. I mean, um... From pricing, this game clocks in at fourteen dollars ninety nine cents. Daleks. Yeah. Do you think that is a good price for neighbors back from hell? Yeah, I guess it's not super intense uh, or anything, but yeah, it, it's not unfair. I think there are only like twelve or so levels but you could replay and try to like if you don't optimize initially you can definitely replay to optimize I'm willing to bet that's less than it cost uh, back in the day mm. you know because well, it's like two games then too yeah it's two games but um, these are like PlayStation 2 games I think so that means they... like about a GameCube version but I'm not sure if that's correct I, my point is, these are games that would have been put onto DVD discs and yes. sold for 20, 30, uh, 40 quid. Yeah. And in those, those versions, I think there was more pressure to optimize because there was, it cared more about the time. But even on this, you could still like just try to get through it. I'd probably actually recommend just try to get through it first and figure out the other stuff. Basically, the only real stress here is uh, you have to be fairly quick to not get caught. You know? Uh -huh. uh, because the neighbor... Like, there's a thing in the corner of the screen that shows what the neighbor is planning on doing next and where they'll be going. But you need to stay well out of their way. Um, or they might uh, see you. Oh. Like, well, like once... There's also, there is, like, one place and maybe some other places later, again, I did not get as far as I wanted, where you can hide. Uh, but, for example, uh, he was running to the bathroom, and he uh, went down into the front hall where I was and saw me even though I was at the other end of the front hall, and uh, I got ejected. <laughs> uh, it's fairly fun, uh, if you're into the kind of thing. Just, I'm not sure if it's something that I would do 
a lot. Like if I would spend a lot of time on it, but. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, um, so I guess that's about it for Neighbors uh, Back from Hell. Uh, mm -hmm. Be sure to tune in after the break as Twilight will be reviewing a zombie card game called Dead Exit. 